We're asked to graph the function f of x is equal to the principal square root of 0.5x minus 1. And to graph it, we're just going to sample some points, some x values that are within the domain of this function, this function definition, and see what the function is equal to for those x values. And then we can connect the dots and see what the curve might look like. So let me do a little table here. And so I'm going to pick some x values, and I'm going to figure out what the, the f of x values are given those x values. And actually, I'm going to do something in between, because I want to have nice, clean numbers. I want to pick x values that are nice, clean integers, and I want to get f of x values that are nice, clean integers. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful in what x values I pick. I want to pick x values so that this part of this part of the expression, this part of the function definition, ends up being ends up being an integer. And if this needs to be an integer, then what's underneath the radical, 0.5x, that needs to be a perfect square. So actually, let me make another column right over here, just to make our, our math a little bit cleaner. Just to make our math a little bit cleaner. You could pick just arbitrary x points. You could pick x to be 1, 2, 3, just go like that. But if on some of those, you might get strange radicals over here, which would be hard for us to, to graph without a calculator. So let's try. So let me write over here what 0.5x is. And I'm doing this just so I can pick this. We want the, this thing right over here to be perfect squares. Because if 0.5x is a perfect square, then the square root of that is going to be is going to be an integer. So let's say that 0.5, let's think about all of the perfect squares. We could start with, well, we could start with 0, then we could go to 1, then we could go to, let's see, 2 isn't a perfect square, 3 isn't a perfect square. I'm just thinking of all of the values that if I took the square root, I get an integer. And then I go to 4, then I go to 9, then I go to 16. Then I go to 25. These are the first. These are definitely the first five perfect squares. And obviously, zero. You take the principal square root of that, you get zero. So these would be good values for 0.5x. But if those are what 0.5x is equal to, what is x going to be? So if 0.5x is zero, then x is also going to be zero. You could solve it separately in equation right over here. You could say 0.5x is equal to zero. X is equal to zero divided by 0.5. Just divide both sides by 0.5 and you get that equal to 0. So in general, to get what the x value is, we just have to take this number and divide it by 0.5. Or another way to think about it, take this number and multiply it by 2. So when 0.5x is 1, that means x is 2, right? 0.5 times 2 is 1. 0.5 times 8 is 4. 0.5 times 18 is 9. 0.5 times 32 is 16. 0.5 times 50 is 25. So these are the x's we're going to pick. And once again, I picked them just so that this part of the expression, this part of the function definition comes out cleanly. And now let's figure out what f of x is at those values. So f of, f of 0 is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.5 times 0. Let me make my radical a little bit bigger. 0 0.5 times 0 minus 1. Well, this part right over here is just 0. 0 minus 1 is just going to be equal to negative 1. Now let's try it when x is equal to 2. f of 2 is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.5 times 2 minus 1. We already know that this part right over here is equal to 1. So you have 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now let's do the next one. f of 4, I've already used that blue color. I'll use green. f of 4, f of 4 is equal to 0 0.5 times 4 times 4 minus 1. So this is, we already know, oh sorry, 0 0.5 times 8. We're not taking f of 4, we're taking f of 8. Let me be careful. This is what the x values are. So f of 8, f of 8 is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 8 minus 1. This part right over here will evaluate to, so 0.5 times 8 is 4. You take the square root, the principal root of 4, you get 2. 2 minus 1 is equal to, is equal to 1. Then over here, we want to do, I'll do this in pink, f of 18. f of 18 is square root of 0.5 times 18, 0 0.5 times 18 minus 1. 0.5 times 18 is 9. You take the square root of that, you get 3. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. We'll do a couple more. f of 
32, f of 32 is equal to 0.5, I'll say 0 0.5, times 32 minus 1. So it's the square root of 16 minus 1. So that's 4 minus 1, the principal root of 16, which is 4 minus 1, which is equal to 3. And then finally, do one more of these. f of 50 is equal to the square root of 0 0.5 times 50. 0 0.5 times 50 is this 25, and we're going to take the square root. So this whole thing is going to evaluate to 5. 5 minus 1 is equal to is equal to 4. So we've taken some x's in our domain. And it's very important to realize here that our domain is restricted. It is not all real numbers. And the reason why it is restricted is if we're going to take the principal root, right, for the sake of this, if we don't go into you know, things like imaginary numbers, and don't worry about that if you don't know what those are, we have to assume that what's underneath the radical sign is positive. And in order for that to be positive, x has to be positive. So in order for 0.5x, to be greater than or equal to 0, which is what the principal root is defined over for, for our purposes in this video, then if you divide both sides of this inequality by 0.5, you say that x has got to be equal, greater than or equal to 0. So we sampled some points in the domain. The domain is all real numbers, all, real, all x's or all real numbers greater than or equal to 0. We sampled some points there. We've strategically picked them so that we get nice clean answers for f of x. But now that we've figured out what f of x is at each of these points, we're ready to plot. So let's, let me draw some axes here. Let me draw some axes. So that's our x-axis. And let's make this our y-axis, our y-axis. And I'll say y is equal to f of x. So whatever f of, whatever f of x we get for a given x, we're going to set that equal to y and plot it on the vertical axis. This is our x-axis right over there. And let's go point by point. Well, actually, first let me draw the scale. So the x-axis goes all the way to 50. So let me divide this. So let's say that this is 10, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, and this is 50. And then our y-axis, we're going to have to go between negative 1 and 4. So let's make this negative 1. Let's make that 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now we're ready to plot all the points. So when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, y or f of x is negative 1. So you have the point 0, negative 1. 0, which is right over there, 0, negative 1. So let me actually, this right over here is 0. But we want to plot the point 0, negative 1. It's going to sit right over there. Let me give us coordinates. That is 0, negative 1. Then we plot 2, comma 0. So 2 is going to be right is going to be right around so if this is that is 5 2 is going to be right around there 2 comma 0 is going to be right there so that point right over there is 2 comma 0 in magenta now we go to now we go to 8 let me switch to that same green color we go to 8 comma 1 8 is going to be right around here we go 1 in the vertical direction, gets us right about there. That is the point 8, 1. Then we go in this, in this pink color to 18, 2. When x is 18, f of x is 2. When x is 18, 18 gets us right about there. When x is 18, f of x is equal to 2. So that puts us right about there. So that is 18, 2. Then what's our next color? We use orange then. Then we have 32 comma 3, where f of x of 30, f of 32 is 3. So 32 is right about there. And f of 32 is 3. So it gets us right, right there. So that is the point 32 comma 3. And then we have the last sample of our domain, which is x is 50 and f of 50 is 4. x is 50, f of 50 is 4. So I'll put it right over there. So this is the point. This is the point 50, comma 4. And now we can connect the dots to get the graph of the function. I'll do that in white. So if I connect the dots, I get a curve that looks like half of a sideways parabola. And that's essentially what it is. So my curve will look something like this. It's important to realize 
that the graph of the function isn't just these points, it's actually any of these points. So if I were to pick an arbitrary x value that's in the domain, remember, the x values, the domain here is x is greater than or equal to 0, or any real number greater than or equal to 0. So if I pick, pick anything on the x on the x axis that is greater than or equal to 0, that's in the domain, and then if I evaluated its function, it should sit on that curve. It should sit on that curve that I just drew.